He heard the wings of a murder of crows as he approached the windmill. A gentle rustle of leaves came from above. Inside the boy knew were stories of the old land. The ancient wisdom of sages long past was waiting for him below the blades of the mill. As he passed the wishing well, the whispers increased. He heard voices of ancient wise women. The door creaked open as he went inside. Books of history greeted him. Books of tales. Books of magic. He was home. Hi, I'm Ash from Elementor, and in this advanced tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to learn how to create this mind-blowing website layout using a combination of SVGs, Lotties, and motion effects. We'll first create the entrance area by setting a shape divider and adding a Lottie animation. We'll then add in our own custom-drawn SVG illustration of the body of our windmill, followed by our windmill blades, which we'll set with a custom position and scrolling animation. Next, we'll create our revealing leaves area by first setting a mask on top of our background images to create a window effect, and then by adding our SVG leaves with custom positioning and motion effects. After this, we'll then configure our trees, well, and bucket to move along with the user's mouse actions. Finally, we'll add in our Google Map and mask it with an SVG shape. To follow along with this tutorial, you will require basic knowledge of the Elementor editor as well as an understanding of Lotties and motion effects. We provided links in the description below to our dedicated tutorials on each of these in case you need to brush up on your knowledge. Be sure to follow along with your own assets to adopt these techniques for your own website creations. So if you're ready to take your web creator skills to the next level, get comfortable and let's get started. We'll start in the Elementor Editor. We'll be using the default layout and we've also hidden the title. We pre-populated this page with its basic structure so that we can focus on the SVGs, Lotties and motion effects. We've also ensured that we have enabled unfiltered uploads via the Elementor settings. Doing so means we're able to upload SVGs and JSON files via the Elementor editor. If you would like to find out more about unfiltered uploads, please check out the link in the description below. To create the first section, we'll first use a shape divider to display the clouds, followed by adding a Lottie animation to display the birds. Let's select the first section, and then in the Style tab, choose Shape Divider. With Top selected, change the type to Clouds, and then set the height. Now open up a new tab and visit the Lottie website. Lotties are JSON-based animations. They work great on websites because they're small files which work on any device and can scale up and down without any pixelation. If you would like to learn more about Lotties, do check out our dedicated tutorial. We'll search for birds. And the first result here, made by Oren Deniz, looks ideal for our design. Select the download button and choose Lottie JSON to save the file to your computer. Please note you will need a free Lottie account to do this. Now back in the editor, search for the Lottie widget and then drop it above the main heading. Select the upload icon. Then drag and drop the downloaded JSON file into the media library. Once uploaded, select Insert Media. Let's now configure the settings for this Lottie animation. Expand the Settings tab and set the trigger to scroll and start point to 15. We'll amend the position next, so open up the Advanced tab and under Positioning, set this as Absolute then the horizontal offset and vertical offset. If we now scroll down slowly, you can see the animation plays for us. Perfect. Let's now move on to the next section. We'll first add our custom SVG illustration of our windmill, and then we'll add the windmill blades which will position absolutely and animate using rotating scrolling effects. We'll first start with a new full width section. Select the column and set the horizontal alignment to center. Since we'll be working with a lot of absolute positioning, 
It will ease our workflow to have all of the elements centered to the page when we position them. Drop in a new image widget. And choose the Windmill SVG. Then in the Style tab, set the image width, as well as the margin. Now drop in a new image widget and choose the Windmill Blades. Then open the Advanced tab, set the Z index to 10 to ensure it appears above our Windmill SVG. Then configure the position, set a custom width, Change the positioning to Absolute, Horizontal Offset and Vertical Offset. By setting the units to Viewport Width and Height, we're able to position the elements according to the Vertical and Horizontal Alignment settings configured via the column. Open the Motion Effects tab next and configure this SVG to rotate when a user scrolls. Turn the scrolling effects on. Then select the Edit icon next to Rotate to switch on this motion effect. If we now scroll down and back up, you can see the blades rotate. Scroll to the top of the page now and choose the first section. We'll apply some negative margin here to align our windmill perfectly. OK, that looks great. Let's now move on to the next section and create our revealing leaves area. We've already placed our three images which will appear in the background for this area. We'll then place a custom shape on top of these images to create a mask. After this we'll add in our illustrated leaves which will all be custom positioned and animated using motion effects. We'll first of all add in an inner section here above our images, remove one of the columns, then set it to full width, with no gap, and a minimum height of 100 VH. Now in the Style tab, set the background to Classic, and choose the Mask Over image from the library. Set the position, repeat, and size. Then in the Advanced tab, set the Z index to 2 to ensure it sits on top of the other elements in this section. We now need to add some custom CSS to set a custom position for our frame and remove any unwanted space. In the Advanced tab, under Custom CSS, type Selector and then open and close the curly brackets. Now inside, type Position, colon, Absolute, semicolon. In the Motion Effects tab, set Sticky to Top and Stay in Column to Yes. Scrolling down you can see our mask image now stays in position while our image in the background scrolls with the user's actions. We'll now populate the inner section with a heading and we'll use the Divider widget to achieve this. Search for and drop in the Divider widget. Set the width, alignment, and then add a text element with the text, have a look inside. Finally, change the HTML tag to a H2 heading. If we now open the Style tab, we can set the visual aspects for this heading. We'll set the weight first to 2, then in the drop down, set the color, font family. font size and spacing. Now in the Advanced tab, open Motion Effects and switch on Transparency. The default settings here work great, so we'll leave them. With the first elements configured here, it's time to add in our frame. In the Widgets menu, find and drop in the image widget underneath our divider title. and choose the frame from the media library. In the Style tab, set the width, 
and then in the Advanced tab, set the Motion Effects. We'll choose Scrolling Effects, followed by Enabling Rotate, and then we'll amend the speed slightly. Next we're going to add in our leaves, which when scrolled will reveal our library image and mask. We'll first select the eye icon next to our inner section, which will temporarily remove it from our view, allowing us to see more clearly. Now add in a new image widget. And select an image from the library. We'll amend the width for maximum width first of all by heading to the Style tab. Then in the Advanced tab, set a higher Z index to ensure the leaf appears above our existing content. Amend the positioning next by changing this to Inline, the position to Absolute, and then set the horizontal offset and vertical offset. These values work great for our design, but for your website you may need different adjustments. We recommend you test out the values which will work best for you. With our positioning set, let's now configure the motion effects. Enable scrolling effects first of all, then set the horizontal scroll, and rotate. Let's now create our second leaf. Right click and duplicate the first leaf. Set the width. And then in the Advanced tab, the positioning. We'll also amend the horizontal offset and vertical offset. Next, amend the motion effects. Vertical scroll first. followed by the horizontal scroll, and finally rotate. OK, two down, two to go. Duplicate the first leaf again, and if you have trouble selecting it in the editor, be sure to make good use of the navigator. Change the image first of all. Then set its width. And in the Advanced tab, the positioning, which includes the horizontal offset and the vertical offset. And finally, the motion effects. We'll configure the horizontal scroll first and then rotate. And now for the final leaf. Duplicate the last leaf, set its width, and in the Advanced tab, head to Positioning. Then we'll amend the horizontal offset, followed by the vertical offset. In the Motion Effects tab, we'll set the vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, and finally rotate. Let's now re-enable our inner section by selecting the icon in the navigator. Because we're working with multiple absolutely positioned elements, from time to time the preview inside the editor may not appear as expected. 
In this instance, save your page as a draft and then refresh. Doing so will ensure you're seeing the layout as expected. If we scroll up and down, you can see our leaves are finished and have created a beautiful reveal for when the user scrolls down through our page. Let's now move on to our next section, where we have these four trees which we'd like to move outwards as the user scrolls down the page. So let's configure that now. These trees consist of two images which have already had absolute positioning applied. So all we need to do is configure the motion effects to achieve the walking through the woods feeling. Select the first image and head over to the Advanced tab. From here, navigate to Motion Effects and enable Scrolling Effects. Here we'll switch on and configure the vertical scroll, which will create the illusion of passing through. Then the horizontal scroll to push the images towards the edge of the screen as we scroll down. And finally, the scale which we'll set to scale down to fit the perspective of the idea. As you can see if we scroll up and down, these motion effects are now applied to our image. Select the other image next and follow the same steps. Go to Advanced, Motion Effects, and then switch on and configure the vertical scroll Horizontal scroll and scale. Okay, that looks great. Let's now add in another Lottie animation. Search for and drop in the Lottie widget just above our images. Select Upload and choose the Bird JSON file which we previously used at the start of the tutorial. This time we'll leave the trigger on Viewport. Now expand the settings and set Loop to Yes to ensure the animation plays continuously whenever the widget is within the viewport. It's now time to add the bucket to our well. We'll amend the positioning and motion effects to place the bucket behind the well and to move up and down when the user scrolls. We would like a slight movement of the pot going up as we scroll down, as well as making the upper part remain invisible behind the well, so let's see how we can achieve this. Add in a new image widget. We'll choose the pot image from the media library. and then set its width. Now in the Advanced tab, we'll set the width to Inline, Position to Absolute, Horizontal Offset, and Vertical Offset. In the Motion Effects tab next, turn on the Scrolling Effects and configure the Vertical Scroll. Ok great, that works really well. Let's now bring this entire section up by giving it a negative margin. This will create an effect of the well revealing within the forest as we scroll down. Then via the Motion Effects tab, we'll apply a subtle scrolling effect. Ok, we're making great progress so far. Now it's time to configure our four books so that the first and third books float up as the second and fourth books float down. Select the first book and head over to the Motion Effects area located in the Advanced tab. Turn Scrolling Effects on and set the vertical scroll like so. Now we'll select the second book and again head over to the Motion Effects area. Enable and configure the vertical scrolling effects. 
OK, this looks great. As you can see, giving a low speed value to the vertical scroll helps us to achieve the subtle floating effect. Let's now set up the third and fourth books. Select the third book. Head to Motion Effects. Enable and configure the vertical scroll. And then finally the fourth book. Motion Effects. Enable scrolling animations. And set up the vertical scroll. If we now scroll down, we can see these books animating as expected. Great! Our final area is just above the website footer and it shows a map widget. We're going to adjust this with CSS filters to get this to match the colours associated with our design and then we'll apply a mask so that the map appears contained in our custom shape. Choose the map widget first of all and then head over to Style, CSS Filters. We'll reduce the brightness first, followed by increasing the contrast. And finally, we'll reduce the saturation. OK, we've achieved a nice grayscale colour scheme for our map. Let's now add our mask. In the Advanced tab, select Mask and then turn this on. Choose Custom from the Shape drop-down and then choose your mask image. Amend the size, position and repeat. Let's now add in our overlay. In the Widgets menu, drag and drop in an image widget just above the map. Choose the image and then in the Style tab, Set the width. And in the Advanced tab, open the positioning area, change the width to inline, and the position to absolute. Finally, open the Motion Effects tab, turn on the scrolling effects, enable Rotate, and configure. Scrolling up and down, you can see these effects in action. And if we try to move around the map, you can see this isn't working as expected. This is because our frame in the image widget sits in front of the map widget, overriding its functionality. Let's fix that now. Expand the custom CSS tab. Type selector, followed by opening and closing the curly brackets. Now within the curly brackets, type pointer hyphen, events, colon, none, semicolon. And if we now drag the map around, you can see that it moves as expected. And there we have it, our web page is now complete. In this advanced tips and tricks tutorial, we first learnt how to insert SVGs and Lottie animations into our design using custom positioning. We then explored how to add motion effects to further enhance our website to act upon our users' actions. Finally, we gained knowledge on when and how to apply shape masks. Thank you for watching. Be sure to comment below with any questions, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks tutorials.